We have a new contender for the greatest upset of all time on a football pitch. And it comes from the CONCACAF Champions League of all places, whose round of 16 was rocked by this stunner. A club that hadn't played a match in a year. A club whose league hasn't played in two years. And despite massive visa issues, was able to beat one of the best teams in the MLS to advance to the quarterfinals of the competition. This is the stuff that Disney movies are made out of, and the team in question is a Violet AC. They are based in Port-au-Prince, or at least they were until the 2010 earthquake made it impossible for them to play there, and now the Haitian club has to play its home matches in the Dominican Republic, but still represents the seemingly defunct Haitian League. The Dominican Republic was actually where the first leg of their match against Austin FC was played, them being the unfortunate MLS team in this story. For Austin FC, when this was drawn, there were a lot of unknowns about going to the Dominican Republic to play a Haitian team, the logistics, the safety, how everything was going to work. Quoted in a Yard Barker article, this Yard Barker article, the goalkeeper Brad Stuver said, we're really going to have to go down there with the idea that there are going to be some unknowns. And those concerns were totally fair, but the unknowns pale in comparison to their opponent. I mean, Austin FC's value, according to the Athletic as a squad, is a tick over $50 million, and they just moved into a stadium that cost $200 60 million dollars to build, producing a fourth place finish in the MLS that qualified them for this competition. And even if you still consider the MLS a meme league, that's a very good professional performance at a, at a very high level. Their opponents, by contrast, are considered full value as a whole squad at $130,000. That's one 320th the value of Austin FC. But the team quality and value is the smallest difference in the unknowns between these two teams. Because even though Violette is technically a professional outfit, according to the status of the league in general, the league hasn't played a match in two years. So a lot of the players still work odd jobs just to try and keep themselves, their families, and their club afloat. Quoted in the Yard Barker article, one of the former players, Ralph Kernazan, said, in Haiti, keeping a team alive, even when it's not in competition from May to today is a feat. A situation so bad that a United Nations rights chief said that the whole country is on the verge of an abyss. The captain, Steven Saba, works in his family's hardware store. Another one of the players, 18-year-old Shad San Milan, is trying to finish high school. He has a few credits left, and that's really what he's focusing on, because his mom's a teacher, according to the athletics reporting. And that's, she's kind of strict about it. This is a country where the per capita gross domestic product is just over $1,600 per year. And these guys are managing to keep their club afloat in that environment without a league going on. Remember Shad Sam Milan from a few seconds ago? Well, he told The Athletic, I always prayed for my teammates that we'd be able to get back home after training. When they were training, um, a lot of their training sessions had to be stopped because the violence, you know, that was occurring outside of their training grounds. You know, they had to train during the day. The team basically decided that even in the sweltering heat in Haiti, you know, training in the evening and then asking players to go home during the evening uh, was sometimes a, a threat to their safety. In spite of all this hardship, Violette had earned the right to be on that field on a balmy night in the Dominican Republic in March to take on Austin FC. And they did that not through their league necessarily. I mean, it's been shut down since 2021. According to the Yard Barker article, Yves Jean Bart, the FA's president, was accused of sexual assault. They just shut the whole thing down after that. They haven't played since. But Violette won the last league that was hosted officially in Haiti. And so it's qualified for the Caribbean Club Championship. And if you win that, you make the CONCACAF Champions League, which starts in the round of 16. It's just a knockout tournament. And not even that was went particularly well. I mean, Violette showed up and lost its first match to Cibao of the Dominican Republic, 3-0. It gutted out a 3-2 win over Cavalier of the Jamaican League to get into the Final Four. Then came from a goal down to beat Waterhouse of the Jamaican League in the semifinal to create a rematch against Cibao in the final, which it won on penalties. And let me bring your attention to something while we look at this final, the date. Because that date, the 22nd of May, 2022, is the last time up until this first match against Austin FC in the CONCACAF Champions League that Violet played a competitive registered match against 
anyone. And they weren't playing a whole lot of unregistered matches either. The players talking to the Athletic, talking to Yard Barker, didn't talk about any friendly matches that were played. They were so worried about just being able to train and get together to have team meetings. Now this is when Violette finally catches its first break. Because after it has to get on a bus and ride nine hours to the field it's playing at in the Dominican Republic, which is a pretty brutal away day for your home match in the CONCACAF Champions League, Austin FC went, you know what? We're probably gonna be okay. This is such a logistical nightmare. We're gonna send most of our B team. It was a bit of a gamble from their coach, Josh Wolf, and it did not pay off. That's because Violette showed up and kicked Austin FC all over the field. Not statistically, but in the goal scoring column. Their forward, Miche Nadir Chari, scored two goals in the first half by just being a massive domineering forward, and they were pressing up the field and getting balls into the box, and he was getting onto the end of them in front of an inexperienced back line. And then out of the half, a third goal for Violette. Uh, Amro Tariq, the Egyptian international, trying to clear a ball out of his box after another header from the domineering Shari, scored an own goal with it. He, he cleared it into his own net in a frantic situation, and it was 3-0. It was the first win in even a single leg of the CONCACAF Champions League for the Caribbean representative in 12 years from a club <laughs> that hasn't played in 10 months. And it wasn't like they got an easy draw. They got one of the best teams in the MLS or Mexico, which that's exactly who you don't want to play here. Or you have a team with an 18 year old who's trying to finish his high school degree and a team who, even though it's a B team, has a center back on the field that probably has Mo Salah's number in his cell phone. There are levels here and Violette is climbing multiple. And that would all come to bear in the second leg because sure you can win three nil in some random field in the Dominican Republic with a giant freaking tree behind the goal where Austin FC is all disoriented. But now you have to go to Austin, Texas in front of thousands and thousands of screaming green clad fans. And there's another issue, visas. In this article from the Austin American Statesman, which was very critical of its own team. This is the local, the local media in Austin who are a little displeased about the way this all went down. Uh, they did point out that the first game was played at a neutral location and the squad for Violette only brought 14 players to town for Tuesday's match due to visa reasons. That's right. Five of their starters and six of their substitutes from the first match were unable to get visas because of the difficult political situation in Haiti in order to play in Texas. Violette had to do something that you will never see in another Champions League, maybe ever. They had to sign players for this match only. And it's not like they were reaching into the top of the barrel here. They signed fully amateur players with Haitian connections to the club to round out their roster for one Champions League match in Austin. First, it was left back Mardosh Samuel Pompey, and then it was winger Maudwindo Hermain that signed from FC Motown in Morristown, New Jersey. The only reason this was possible is because Gideon Ba, the former Ghanaian international, is the coach of the team, and he was really just sympathetic to the plight, even though it was going to affect his registration for upcoming US Open Cup matches. But the result is that Violet has its team, and it takes the field in Austin a week after a stunning 3-0 win against Austin's B team and takes on the Austin A team. It gives up 77 percent possession, 35 shots, and is under siege for the entire game, as the local Austin media is all too keen to point out. Uh, for those who aren't a fan of the sport of soccer, this contest would be an example they could point to as why. Violette used a bunker defense the entire game, with many instances of all 11 of its players being in the final one-third of its side of the field. But even the local Austin media had to acknowledge it worked. It was the correct strategy because Austin only scored two goals and shorthanded, outmanned, outresourced by magnitudes that those raised in the environments that I was raised in can scarcely understand. Violette held on for a 3-2 win and one of the most shocking results anyone has ever seen. I don't think I need to add any qualifiers to that. In the Athletics interview with Shad San Milani said some of the players who didn't get visas were really important to us. That obviously shows in the flow of the game, but they got the job done. He said, if we have to go with just 12 players, we're still going to put our hearts into the game. Why? Well, they don't have the advantages that certain other teams have, right? They're not able to play home matches. There's a feeling from the, them from within their camp that anything they can do to, to give people back home that are suffering, people that have lost family members, people that are enduring violence. I think their goal is to just provide a, a 
I guess a, a glimmer of hope for, for their fans watching back home. And that's what the players told me. I think that's how they view their role in it. Chad and everybody else on that Violet team, I think you've done more than enough to raise Haitian spirits with a truly stunning result over Austin FC. Violet now plays Lyon from the Mexican League on April 4th, and they have their home leg in the Dominican Republic on April 11th. If you want to learn more about this story, all of the sources that we used are in the description. The athletics article in particular goes into great detail about the trials, tribulations, and triumphs of this particular group of players. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button so we can make more of these in the future. Yeah, go team. And if you want to keep binge watching videos, you don't have to move at all. I've got another one for you about how the Japanese national team went from no World Cup appearances in 1990 to, well, beating Spain and Germany at the most recent World Cup and making back-to-back -back knockout stages. It is a wild story.